I think, uh, I, let me start by saying something very controversial. You know, I once, some time ago now, asked a director of a major academic institute in India that uh, what do you produce or what, do, what comes out of your institute? And he said, sadly, people at 5 p.m. And at the end of the year, some more PhDs. So this is exactly what we don't want academic institutions to do that the focus of academic institutions for collaboration with the industry has to be such that we produce something together or we produce something which is helpful for society. And even during, uh, as, as everybody was talking about COVID vaccines, realize one thing that most of the vaccines have come out of institutions. I think the, uh, the uh, this is either institutions or collaborations. Yeah? So it is either Oxford or there is this uh, two Turkish scientists from BioNTech who... So everywhere it has been a collaboration story of how people developed uh, even vaccines. So uh, one of the features that we have seen, and I think uh, Harish mentioned that, is that there is a slight amount of change or a reasonable amount of change that is coming in the collaboration is that institutions are now ready to come, academic institutions and institutions are ready to come forward and collaborate with the industry. We easily could <coughs> do collaborations with US universities. They had a separate office by which you go and talk to the coordinators of uh, research. And you could coordinate with departments very easily. IP, IP was taken care, everything was done. It was much, much easier. So there were facilitators there. But in India, the expectation was that uh, academic institutions need not try and go to the industry. If at all industry wants something, they should come and talk to us. We would not even tell them beforehand what we do. So it was that tough, I think, 10 years ago. It was really, really tough. Today, it's a little more open, uh, comparatively easier to get agreements done, IP done. It has come a long way. And uh, uh, to give you a few examples of how we are trying to build collaboration in many institutes is, uh, I think this is going a little faster now for us. One, we are. Uh, right in Pune, we have a very, very good collaboration going on with uh, NCL, where uh, what we are doing with NCL is that most companies do not have ability to create their own cell lines. If you tell companies to do their cho uh, cho cell lines for their products, they generally go and hire somebody who does the work in US and then brings the cell line here. That's generally the pattern that we have seen in India. But with NCL, we are doing a collaboration to say that why can't we build our own cell lines? Why should we go anywhere else? Is it really that rocket science that we can't build our cell lines? And actually speaking, NCL has capability in one department to help this out and get this done. So until we reached NCL, we didn't know. Uh, fortunately, it has turned out well for us. The collaboration is on. I think by next year, we should get our first uh, couple of cell lines out by a collaboration. So it, is, it, is, it works. Um, IISCR, another great institute Pune has. We are again trying to see what we can do together. Uh, we make uh, anti-snake venoms extremely important in this country. We have been crying hoarse for 20 years that, look, the current anti-snake venoms is a combination of four snakes, and it is not customized. It is not regionalized. Therefore, it may not be that effective to people in different areas. So we need to customize it. We need to ensure that they are regionalized. And for that, we require to do the following things. We need access to venoms. Goes on and on, but private sector was not encouraged to get access to venoms to do research also. The only way we could do it was go to institutions. So now we are working with uh, ISC Bangalore to get this organized in such a way. And ISC Bangalore had capability existing for years. But again, it was a struggle to find out where that capability lies. There was some ca capability also in IIT Delhi. But now we have now started working on those, so we get access to regional venoms, and we can create a much better, uh, uh, let's say, a, a venom structure by which uh, we might be able to help. Let's say the, the cobra in Rajasthan is a little different than what you have in Chennai. So you cannot have the same anti-venoms going in both the places. So how do we do this? And that has become an important feature for us. We are doing a few, some more work with IIT Mumbai. We have started talking to UDCT. We have started talking to IIT Delhi. So as it goes on, I think the expectation that uh, I think Dr. Mukherjee laid out very nicely is the fact that we need to ensure that 
industry and academia are ready to understand that everything that we do together, it's not a theoretical exercise. It should benefit people, citizens, and mankind. If it doesn't benefit, it's of no use. Whether there should be a commercial area for it or not, better there is a commercial outcome for it because the more you uh, create uh, economics going through it, the more collaborations and more success we can have as a country. So it is extremely important that there is commercial value of what we do. But also there will be situations where uh, you, know, you, you need to do things which may need not have that level of commercial value. You can release your IP for certain reasons, which we do at times. So those things can be done. But we should not avoid the fact that this industry will come to academia, industry will come to institutions with the basic fact that they are interested in business. They want to ensure that there is commercial benefit that they also have. At the same time, there is benefit to mankind. So there is this twin track that they will always operate on. Currently, there is a little more openness than before. Earlier, it used to be really tough to explain this. But I don't think this is any longer a problem. So what we also expect, let me close by saying that we also expect institutions and academia to come and talk to us. Tell us what you're doing. The more you talk to us, the more chances of collaboration. The more there is information with us, we can come, come back to you and say, okay, these are the areas we'll be interested in. Uh, for, uh, you know, for example, the world has completely moved from chemistry to biologics in a great way in R&D. And India should not miss this cycle. We missed the chemistry cycle. We only copied medicines and uh, built a pharmacy of the world at low value. No longer we need to miss this, uh, you know, the current scene of moving to biologics or moving to large molecules. If we do not have to miss the bus, more the institutions talk because they have, you know, there is some very good work happening in India. And if the institutions talk, industry would be more than happy because there is a long way run in that and the value is much, much higher for the industry too. So let me stop here by saying that really we are very keen to ensure that collaborations happen. We have seen good benefit of it. We are currently working on a lot of collaborations with the institutions. And the more institutions talk to us, the more collaborations we will be able to do. So thank you very much.